Did you know that a whopping 78% of workers in the United States live paycheck to paycheck? Shocking, isn't it? Now before you start panicking, let's talk about how you can avoid falling into that statistic. The secret? Personal finance and budgeting. Yes, you heard it right. Personal finance is all about managing your money, from income and expenses to investments and savings. And budgeting, well, it's your financial game plan. It's about knowing where your money comes from and where it goes. It's about being in control of your financial life, not letting it control you. It's about setting financial goals and making sure you're on the right path to achieve them. So, if you're tired of being a part of that 78% and want to break free from the paycheck to paycheck cycle, stick around. You're in for a treat. All right, let's dive into the nitty gritty of personal finance. Now, don't let the term scare you off. It's not as complex as it sounds. Personal finance in its simplest form is all about managing your money. It's about understanding what comes in, what goes out, and what's left behind. Let's start with the money you earn. It's not just your nine to five paycheck. It could be the return on your investments, the cash from your side hustle, or even the occasional windfall from grandma. It all adds up and forms your total income. On the flip side, we have expenses. These are the bills you pay, the groceries you buy, and the fun stuff you spend on. They're usually categorized into fixed expenses like your rent or mortgage, variable expenses such as your utility bills and groceries, and discretionary spending. Think holidays and hobbies. Now, here's where it gets interesting. The difference between your income and expenses is what determines your financial health. If you're earning more than you're spending, you're on the right track. But if it's the other way around, it might be time for a financial checkup. But that's not all. Personal finance also includes assets and liabilities. Assets are things you own that have value. This could be your home, your car, or your investments. Liabilities, on the other hand, are what you owe. This could be a mortgage, a car loan, or a credit card debt. Your net worth is the difference between your assets and liabilities. It's a snapshot of your financial health at a particular point in time. The goal is to increase your net worth over time, and that's where financial goals come into play. Whether it's building an emergency fund for those rainy days, repaying debt to free up more of your income, or saving for retirement so you can sip cocktails on a beach someday, everyone has financial goals. The key is to set realistic goals and work towards them consistently. And remember, personal finance is not about depriving yourself. It's about making informed decisions. So you can still that latte or weekend getaway. Just make sure it fits into your budget and aligns with your financial goals. So that's personal finance in a nutshell. The balance between what you earn, what you spend, and what you save. It's about making your money work for you, so you can live the life you want without the financial stress. And really, who doesn't want that? And if you're finding this video helpful, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more personal finance tips and tricks. Now let's tackle the beast, budgeting. Imagine budgeting as your personal financial GPS. It's your roadmap to achieving your financial goals. So how do you create this roadmap? Let's delve into a few popular methods. First up, the 50-30-20 rule. It's as simple as pie, or should we say, as simple as a pie chart. 50% of your income goes to your needs, 30% to your wants, and 20% to your savings or debt repayments. Next, we have zero-based budgeting. Picture your income as a glass of water and your expenses as different sized cups. The goal is to pour out every drop of water, your income into the cups, your expenses, until you're left with an empty glass or zero balance. Last but not least, the envelope system. Just like it sounds, you put cash in different envelopes for different spending categories. When the cash is gone, it's gone. No more spending in that category until next month. Now, on to budgeting tools. There's a smorgasbord of apps and tools to help you manage your money. Some of the popular ones include Mint, YNAB, that's short for you need a budget, and Pocket Guard. Each has its unique features, so it's worth taking the time to find one that fits your needs like a glove. Let's not forget the importance of tracking expenses. It's like being on a diet and not counting calories. Without knowing where your money is going, you can't effectively plan how to spend it. Luckily, many budgeting apps include expense tracking features. However, budgeting isn't all rainbows and unicorns. There are challenges. Impulse purchases can strike like a bolt of lightning, obliterating your budget. Lifestyle inflation can creep up on you, like a shadow as your income grows. And unexpected expenses can pop up like whack-a-moles, throwing your budget off balance. But fear not, armed with a solid budgeting method, a user-friendly tool, and a keen awareness of your spending habits, you can overcome these challenges. 
Remember, a budget is not a restriction, but a liberation from financial stress. So, let's tame that budgeting beast and take control of our financial future. Now that we've got the basics down, here are some practical tips to make budgeting a breeze. First off, let's talk about prioritizing needs over wants. We all love that rush from snagging the latest gadget or outfit, but do we really need it? Mindful spending is all about distinguishing between what you want and what you need. This doesn't mean you can't treat yourself, but setting spending limits can help keep those impulse buys in check. Next up, automate your savings. The easiest way to save is to never see the money in the first place, right? Setting up recurring transfers to your savings account can help you steadily work towards your financial goals without even thinking about it. It's like having a personal finance fairy godmother. Onto the fun part, who doesn't love a good deal? Utilizing coupons and discount apps is a great way to stretch your budget. There's a certain thrill in knowing you've scored a bargain. Plus, it's not just about scrimping and saving, it's about smart shopping. There are countless resources out there to help you save, from cashback apps to bulk buying clubs. Remember, a penny saved is a penny earned. Lastly, let's talk about creating a financial buffer. Life is unpredictable, and unexpected expenses can pop up out of nowhere, like that time your pet decided to snack on your favorite shoes. Having an emergency fund can provide a safety net and give you peace of mind. It doesn't have to be a huge amount, even a small buffer can make a big difference. So there you have it. Prioritize needs over wants, automate your savings, utilize coupons and discount apps, and create a financial buffer. With these tips, you're well on your way to becoming a budgeting pro. So there you have it, the ABCs of personal finance and budgeting. We've decoded the mysteries of income, expenses, assets, and liabilities, and navigated the realms of the 50-30-20 rule, zero-based budgeting, and the envelope system. We've discussed how to prioritize needs over wants and the importance of creating a financial buffer. Sounds like a lot? Don't worry, take it one step at a time. Start with tracking your expenses. You'll be surprised how much those morning lattes add up. Then, work your way to setting up a budget. Remember to keep it realistic and flexible. Use the tools we've mentioned to help you along the way. And most importantly, make sure to set some money aside for your future self. Remember, personal finance is not a mystery, it's a journey. So, why not start your journey today? If you found this video helpful, do hit that subscribe button and share your experiences in the comments below. Until next time, keep budgeting.